Hey everybody, this is Kathy from KDL Handmade and I wanted to welcome you to my video tutorial today for the Louis sling. Oh my gosh, this is so cute. Look at this. You can wear it as a sling bag. It's adjustable. You can wear it as a waist pack. So there's an adjustable slider bar on the side, a little strap keeper so you don't have anything flopping around because we all know nobody wants things flopping around. <laughs> the back has a zipper pocket. So you can store stuff back there. And then inside, let me see, I might have some stuffing in here to help it. Yep. Inside it's just open and you can store all your stuff inside. Super trendy, super cute, super fun. I wanted to say a big thank you to Tara from Uh Oh Creations. Tara has allowed us to sew this pattern today as part of our Marathon Society's um, sewing series. And so this is the featured pattern today. This is the small size Louis waist bag. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so to go over the pieces that we're going to need, we're going to have a main piece and there is one exterior two lining. Now I am using this um, bonded nylon here and waterproof canvas for the lining. So I am not using any interfacing with mine, but if you are using cotton woven or anything that requires interfacing, you will attach that before we get to sewing. Okay, and then you're gonna have a back lining piece. You will have for your base, you will have one exterior and one lining. And you might notice I've marked the centers on all these pieces. There are parts in the pattern that require you to uh, transfer markings or mark the centers. And so I've gone ahead and done all of that first. Uh, you will have a zipper gusset, one exterior and one lining. Strap wings, you'll have two of these and these are going to be where you connect your side straps to. You will have a back bottom. You'll have one in exterior fabric, one in lining fabric, and a back top. And for that one, you will only have one exterior piece. Okay, and then you will also need two lengths of zipper. I'm using number five size zipper. You will need three zipper pulls. And not clips, you don't need clips. Well, you probably will need clips, but <laughs> those aren't called for in the pattern. You will need, uh, these are zipper flanges. They're called in the pattern and there are markings already marked there. You will need a side release buckle and I'm using one inch hardware. You will also need one D-ring. And again, you can use one inch or one and a half inch hardware. I'm using one inch hardware for here. And you will also need some strap webbing. I am using this um, one inch wide strap webbing for my bag. And then you will need some fold over bias tape. So I'm using this, this is waterproof canvas here. And it's just a very thin um, canvas strip that I will use as my um, fold over bias tape. Okay, so that is all the stuff we need. You might want to grab some clips, grab your seam ripper, and let's get going. All right, so we're going to start with the main body construction first. For this, you're going to need your back bottom pieces. There is a lining and an exterior. We're going to start with the lining piece. We are going to lay that right sides up. And then with the shorter of your zippers, with the zipper to the left when closed, we're going to line that up right on the top there. And it is longer than your panel. That is by design. We are going to trim it later on in the step. So we're just going to clip straight across here, across the top of the zipper. And then we're going to baste stitch right across this top. Okay, once you have that basted across the top, you're going to take your back um, bottom line or exterior piece, flip it right side down. You're gonna line it up again with the top of that zipper edge. And this time we're going to sew straight across at the full seam allowance. 
and the full seam allowance is identified in the pattern instructions. We're just going to sew straight across this edge. All right, once that is stitched across, we're just going to now press both panels away from the zipper. I usually like to add a couple clips here to the fabric pieces just to help hold them in place um, so they don't kind of come out of alignment. I'll still have to hold it with my fingers, but um, that just helps it to hold for me. So now we're going to top stitch straight down this edge at about 1 8 inch away from the fabric. All right, next step, we're going to grab our back lining piece and holding that right side up, we're going to place that right side up on the table and then taking the panel we just completed with the zipper, we're going to lay it down right on top of that. So matching up this top edge up here, I'm just going to clip that in place. And this is going to create the pocket for us on the back side there. And let me grab another clip. One more clip at the end. Okay, so now you're going to grab your back top piece and you're going to lay that right side down and you're going to clip it in place straight across here. So again, making sure it's centered, everything is lining up on the left and the right side and then lining up here along the top. Let's clip that in place. All right, there we go. Now we're going to stitch using the full seam allowance all the way through all of these layers. And then we're going to flip this up. Only this, we're going to leave this lining, this back pocket lining down. We're just going to flip this piece up and then top stitch along that folded edge. All right, so here is what our panel is looking like. We have our lining, then we have our zipper, this top piece only was pressed away. Now we are ready to cut it to the shape of our, our Louis pack. So we're going to take the pattern piece and this dashed line right here, we're going to line that up with the center of the zipper. And then from there, we're just going to, if I can find my rotary cutter, we're just going to trim all the way around. All right, so making sure, again, that the dashed line is lined up with the center of our zipper. I'm going to trim this in steps, <laughs> making sure everything stays lined up. And of course, I've got the zipper pull here, which makes it a little bit bumpy, uh, but that's okay. Optionally, you could wait to put your zipper pull on, um, and then that would make this part a little bit easier. But I didn't want to forget. <laughs> There's nothing worse than getting done and then realizing, ah, I forgot to put the zipper pull on, and then you got to take stuff apart. So I thought, well, I'll just do it now, and then I won't have to worry about it. Okay, so there is your pattern piece all trimmed to size, and now we're ready for the next step. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to be working on the zipper, um, the gusset. So we're going to start with the zipper and the zipper flanges. So again, we have two um, for each side. I'm just going to set one set aside for now. And we're going to take it and line it up, right sides up, and then we're going to take the edge of our zipper and line it up along the side here. I'm just going to add a couple clips in place to hold it in place. And then we're just going to baste stitch straight across right along the edge of this um, zipper tape. Okay, so that's how that looks there. Just baste it along that edge. There's the marking that we made earlier. And then we're going to take 
our um, I had these reversed so we're gonna take our exterior and flip it over again matching this long side points are towards the middle and we're going to clip this one in place across the top and again doing the same thing just basting this one in place right along that edge Okay, once we have the exterior and the lining both basted on, this is how it's looking, what we want to do now is we're going to sew across at the full seam allowance right where this mark is here. We're going to keep our needle down, so make sure your needle stays down, and then you're going to pull the zipper tape away. So basically what you want to do is we're just going to make this slight little bend here in the zipper, and then your lining and your exterior should line up like that. So let me see if I can clip this to show what it looks like. So it's just going to bend down a little bit. You're going to have a little bit of a, of a little, um, I don't know what you call it, a bend, a gap <laughs> in your zipper as you pull it down. And then you're going to um, just stitch to the end of that. So again, three eighths of an inch, keep your needle down in this mark and then stitch to the end. All right, once you get that done there, you're just gonna stitch all the way to the end of the point, and mine is pretty close, so I'm happy with that. <laughs> We're going to press the exterior and the lining away from the zipper, and then we're just going to top stitch along this straight edge right here. And then we're going to repeat the whole process for the other side. Okay, so the other side, our other zipper flanges, our lining is right side up, aligning that straight edge there. And grab some more clips. All right, we're gonna base stitch across here and then taking our other zipper flange, laying it right sides down. Again, the long straight edge along the top, the short edge aligns with the edge of your zipper here. We're going to baste stitch right along the edge here, and then we're gonna take it at the full seam allowance, keeping our needle down, and then again, we're gonna pull the zipper down so that it lines up straight like that, and then continue stitching along to the point. Then we're gonna press both away and top stitch straight across. All right, so here's what our zipper is looking like with our flanges attached. And you might notice that I have a new accessory. Yep. <laughs> I uh, was moving some stuff off camera and I just barely, just barely touched my finger uh, with the rotary blade. So this is my PSA for today. <laughs> it's important to change your rotary blades, but when you do, remember that they are very sharp when they are brand new. So please be careful. Rotary blades are sharp. <laughs> All right, so now to work on our gusset, we're going to be working on the opposite side here that doesn't have anything attached, and we need our two gusset pieces. We are going to take the lining piece, lay it right sides down, and centering our zipper over that gusset, we are going to clip in place along this top edge here. Okay, you can baste straight across there. And then we're going to take our lining gusset piece. We're going to lay it right sides down on top of that. Again, aligning left and right and along this raw edge of the zipper. We're going to clip all the way across. I know my zipper pulls are right here, which is where um, it's making the zipper a little bit wonky so when i get to this part of sewing i'll stop here and then i'll move my zippers out of the way straighten this out and then continue stitching straight across okay once that is sewn we are going to press the fabric away from the zipper panel for the exterior and the lining both And again, I'm just going to match up my fabric here. That's going to help hold it away from the zipper. And then we're what we're going to do is we're going to top stitch along this folded edge here. And then we are going to baste stitch around the three sides. So let me get finish getting this clipped on here. 
Okay, so once you get that clipped, you're going to top stitch right along this folded edge here. Once you get that top stitched, you're going to baste stitch starting up here, down along this edge, and back up to this edge. All right, here is what our zipper gusset is looking like. And it looks a little bit, looks like I got a little bit of a curve right there. But hopefully you won't notice it because it's going to be curved around the bag. So I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to leave it. But here's what our gusset is looking like. Now what we want to do is we want to grab our base. So taking our lining piece for the base, we're going to lay that right side up. Taking your gusset right on top of that, we are going to align the short edge here. And that should match up exactly. So your width here should be the same for your gusset and for your base. Then you're going to take your exterior base, lay it right sides down, and again, clipping in place. Okay, now here we're going to sew at the full seam allowance, and then we're going to press both of these panels back and away, and then top stitch, and then we'll repeat for the other side. All right, once that side is attached, again, like I said, we pushed it um, both panels away from the zipper to create the gusset. Now we are going to take and attach to the other side the same way. So this might, if you haven't made a gusset like this before, this might feel a little strange. Um, but you're going to have this piece that's going to be a little bit bigger on the inside and that's okay. That's how it's supposed to be. We're supposed to take now our lining piece, right sides together, lining it up on this side, clipping it in place. And so this is what it's going to look like from the side. The part with the zipper is going to be um, bigger and it's going to be kind of squished in there. And then you have your two pieces right sides together. And then again on this side, we're going to sew at the full seam allowance and then press both panels away and top stitch. All right, so this is what that is looking like. Both sides here are attached to the zipper. Now the last thing we need to do is just baste stitch the base together. So these pieces here, we want them basted together. So right where this seam is, over to this seam, we're just gonna baste stitch right along the edge and the same that side to that side. And that's going to make attaching the side panels a lot easier if we have these together as one piece. All right, there we go. That is base stitched um, on both sides, all the way around the base. And now our gusset is complete. We can set this to the side and then we're gonna work on our strap connectors next. All right, so to work on our strap, we are going to need our length of strap webbing. We are going to need our two strap wings, our slide release buckle and our optional D-ring. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to attach the strap into this, um, the one strap wing. So what you wanna do is you wanna fold this right sides together, just like that. And then we're going to lay the webbing down inside of here. And we want it overhanging the short edge here by about one inch. So I'm just gonna clip across the top. You want your strap webbing to be attached or slid up right next to this fold. And on the short side, your webbing will stick out about one inch. And then we are going to sew down this side here according to the seam allowance that is provided in the pattern. All right, so here is how that is looking based or um, just sewn, not basted, just regular stitch length sewn all the way down the short edge and along this long edge, leaving this piece open because now we are going to turn it through. We're going to pull it out. And let's see, I'm going to use my little knitting needle and try to make sure that corner is nice and poked out. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to stitch across this edge, down this edge, 
and then back down around this edge. So that's the, our first row of stitching. Then we're gonna come in a quarter of an inch from that and then stitch right along that line. And then again, another quarter inch from that, stitch right along. So basically we're gonna be sewing up this whole area with stitching, um, stitching this all together. And then the last step is then to baste down this side and trim off that dog ear. Okay, here's how that looks. So all sewn together. And then I have my stitch lines all the way filling up this whole piece. Now we can set this longer section to the side. We're going to grab our strap anchor and we're going to do the exact same thing. So there is instructions in the pattern that tells you how to subcut your length of strap webbing so that you have the longer piece here and then you have a shorter strap anchor piece. So just make sure that um, you check that in the pattern so you have the correct measurements there. Okay, now just like on this other one, we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to sew down, you know, again, making sure it overhangs by about an inch, sew down the short side, and then down the angled side, leaving this one undone. Then we're going to pull it back, top stitch, and then do the exact same stitching like we did here. We're going to do it on this side too. All right, so here is our strap anchor end. Now the last thing we need to do before we set this aside is we need to take our buckle and the part that has the prongs, we're going to set that to the side. And for this one, we are going to slide the buckle on and we're going to bring it over so that the raw end of the strap here lines up with the raw end of your strap anchor. So that's how it's going to look just a little piece right there. That's all you need. Um, so we are going to let me grab a clip here. On the back side here, you're going to measure, there is a measurement provided in the pattern. You're going to measure away from this buckle and mark a line. And then there's a second measurement. You're gonna measure from that line, you're gonna measure and mark a line. And then you're going to stitch a box around those lines that you marked there. So that is going to be our first anchor square. All right, so there is that first box sewn onto my strap. Now, the one thing I will say is make sure your buckle is orientated, orientated, oriented. Make sure it's facing the right way. <laughs> so you might think that this is the front of your, what's gonna be the front, but it's actually the back side. So the part that has the strap coming across is gonna be on the outside of the bag. So just make sure the top of your buckle has the top of the strap webbing here. Okay, now optionally, if you are adding the D-ring, you're going to add that on. And I'm just gonna clip it in place here. And then there are measurements again. We're going to just stitch a box all the way across and probably coming up as close as we can to the D-ring here. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that and stitch it all the way on. All right, so here is how that looks finished, attached, D-ring, everything's sewn on, boxes sewn on. Okay, so now we are ready to, if I don't throw my pieces around, we are ready to attach the the um, uh, strap wings here to the back piece. So one side note is I added a logo tag here. If you wanted to add some sort of logo tag or label or something to your bag you can add it to the back I just measured mine let's see I centered it and measured it up about three quarters of an inch um, so that's where I put this label but if you wanted to do that then go ahead and do that before we attach these side pieces because it won't be very easy to do at all I know be crying <laughs> I mean, maybe you won't be crying, but you just won't be happy. So, all right, so I'm just showing where these are going to be attached to your back piece. There is a measurement provided in the pattern. I have not, I just eyeballed these. I'm going to confirm off camera that I have the measurement correct, but you're going to put your 
um, strap anchor side on the right side and then the wing that has the long length of webbing is going to go on the left side and these are both right side up so your back is right side up and your wings are right side up um, and then we are going to baste stitch down each side all right so here's how the back looks with the wings attached so that's how it's going to look when it's opened up and i see i have a little string here i need to trim off um so but this is your back pocket here this is on the right side long webbing on the left side and now we are ready for final construction so let's set, set this to the side and then we're going to attach the gusset to the front side first all right so to attach our gusset we're going to take our main front exterior we're going to lay it right sides up and then we're going to grab our gusset and we're going to turn it right sides out now i've marked on my zipper here a center mark and i'm just going to line it up with that little notch that i made in the exterior okay i'm going to clip just a couple to either side just to get it started here and then same clipping a couple to this side. Okay, now flipping it over, I'm going to grab the other center mark here with lining it up with the center mark on the bottom, the base part of the gusset. And I'm going to clip it in place. Again, adding a couple clips to either side. Okay, and then we are going to end up clipping the rest of the way around the gusset here, but I will say the pattern does call for, or, or it provides a tip for stitching the straight sides first. So just stitching that first to hold it in place, and then we're gonna work around the corners and the sides there to get all of the rest lined up the way it should be. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna stitch just between here, not going into the corners at all, just between where I clipped on the top and the bottom, and then I'll be back to show the rest. All right, so there we are, stitched on the top and the bottom. Now I'm going to start with this corner here, and I'm going to use my favorite tool, the Tim Holtz Mini Stapler, and I'm just going to use that around the corners because corners can be really tricky <laughs> um, and I find that if I just use clips it often will slide on me and and become somewhere that I don't want it to be <laughs> so I'm just going to use the staples on this on the corners I use clips on the side going all the way up and then here in the top again we're just going to ease it around Clipping it in place as I go. Okay, now doing the same thing to the other side. Again, I'm going to start here. I'm starting at the bottom just because I want it, I, want, I think it'll be easier to sew. I mean, the other side lined up pretty easily for me. So just having this part kind of held. I think it's going to make a huge difference. All right, and then clipping up the side. Now the pattern does mention if you need to ease it in around the zipper, um, if it's a little tight or if it's just not lining up correctly, um, that you could, one option is you could uh, snip into the zipper. Um, I know that some people that's a, a, a super scary thought because um it, it could compromise the integrity and the strength of your zipper come long term so if you don't have to like this one eased in really well really easily so if you don't have to um, snip your zipper i would recommend not snipping your zipper um, just to make sure that everything stays nice and strong 
Okay, now once we get that done, we are going to then now, from where we started and stopped our top and bottom stitching, we're just going to stitch around the sides. All right, there we go. So that is stitched all the way around. Now we're gonna flip it over so it is right sides up. We are going to take one of our lining gussets. Now here we need to kind of fold this in out of the way because what we're going to do is we are going to take it and lay it right side down and we're going to sandwich the gusset in between. So I'm gonna start just clipping all the way around All right, once you have that clipped all the way around, we are going to start and stop, leaving a turning hole in the bottom. So starting and stopping here, add a couple back stitches just to help secure that and tack that down. We're gonna stitch all the way around according to the seam allowance in the pattern, coming here and stopping again. Then this hole is gonna be open and that's where we're gonna turn it through. So right now we're just gonna stitch right across here, leaving that turning hole at the bottom. All right, once that is stitched, you're going to trim the corners here along the bottom only. Don't trim the top because that's where the zipper is. And then we're gonna turn it through. Okay, so what you end up here with here is this little gap where you turned it through. Now you have the option to, you can either put some fabric glue in here or some tape and then you can hand stitch it. I'm going to use some Fabri-Tac um, that is fabric glue and that should hold it well enough. I don't think I'm going to hand stitch it also. Um, I think this will hold it well enough and I also always have the option of once I am using the bag and I see if for some reason it's getting a lot of wear and tear or having some issues down here i can always hand sew it together later um, but i think for right now it'll be just fine <laughs> all right so the last thing that we need to do here while this is drying i'm going to let this continue drying before we attach the other side of the gusset we need to top stitch this front flap here of the bag. So what we're going to do is right where this flange ends, right here, we're gonna start our top stitching and stitch all the way around to the other side, connecting that line on that flange. So just zip it, or top stitching around the top part here. All right, now to attach the back gusset, we're going to take our back piece here and then our lining piece. So we want these two pieces wrong sides together. And then we're just going to clip them in place and then just baste stitch around this panel to hold them together. So this side, the other side, we were able to do it, turning it through. This side, we're going to attach it and then we're going to bind this side. So if you haven't bound before, now's your chance <laughs> oops and if you have i feel like it's either a love or hate relationship with binding so tell me which camp are you in do you love it or do you hate it for me i think i don't love it <laughs> maybe that's a third camp i don't love it but I do it when it's necessary and it makes certain things easier. So that's kind of the third camp. That's the camp I'm in. I'm not a love or hate. I'm like in the middle, I guess. If I have to, I will. <laughs> All right, so now we're gonna baste this around and then we are going to, after you get that basted, we are going to attach it to the gusset. So again, we have our center markings here. We are going to take the webbing and just drop it inside. Open up your zipper so it's easy to access. And then just like we did on the other side, we're gonna attach the top and bottom, clip it all the way around, and then sew at the full seam allowance. 
Okay, now that I have this back side basted around, I am going to just come into the corners. I'm just gonna trim them a little bit and then just give them a couple snips up to that sewing line. Let's see if I can do this without, there we go. And then same on this side. And again, just a couple little snips. Ooh, there we go. Cutting through all these layers is a little tough. Okay, the top doesn't, the top isn't really too bad. I'm just gonna, I'm just trimming this a little bit if I see anything that's like off. And it, I think it looks, it all looks really good. I'm just gonna trim this a little bit here at the top just to make sure it's nice and even, because now the last step that we need to do is we need to put the binding on. So whatever binding you have, whatever method you're using, we're going to now take the binding strip and I'm going to start at the bottom and we're just going to clip this around, all the way around this back side. Okay, and then here at the end, I'm just going to trim it a little bit longer than what I need. And then I'm going to fold over this edge just a little bit it doesn't there's no scientific method or calculation or anything just enough to cover to cover the other side and then there I won't have the raw edge of the binding even though it won't fray I just like the finished edge a little better all right so now I'm going to take it over to the machine and with this side down against the table I am just going to stitch it all the way around um, attaching the binding all right once your binding is attached we are ready to turn it through. Get our first peek at how it's gonna look. I think it's gonna be really cute. <laughs> I added my little tag right here. I just thought that would be a really cute way um, and that actually turned out really well like I really like the placement of that there okay so oh my gosh you guys this is so cute I love this bag love this pattern like I said it's super trendy you've probably seen it around town everybody's wearing it all the cool kids are wearing it so now we can be cool kids too <laughs> all right so the last thing we need to do is attach the other side of the buckle and we'll be done All right, so the pattern does call out if you're using a strap slider, like an adjuster bar, you can attach that first. Or if you're not using a strap slider, you can use a strap keeper. Um, I might be making a strap keeper. I'm not 100% sure yet. <laughs> I'll probably mainly be using this bag as a sling, so I'm not sure I'll need it shorter, but a strap keeper probably would be a great idea. And that's just basically a little piece of fabric that you can um, wrap around here, and so you could strap tuck your strap end into it so you don't have you know what I mean you don't have this like if you adjusted it to this length then you won't have this like piece flopping it's like on a belt loop you know what I mean you have a little thing that you can tuck it into to hold it secure so that is not a bad idea so I will say that with my male side of the buckle it already has an adjuster bar, so I don't need to add an adjuster bar to it. Um, now, let me see if I can make sure I have this oriented the right way. So this is going to be the underside. I just wanna make sure it's not twisted. Okay, so with the underside, what you wanna do is you wanna, with this one, you're gonna push it through from the bottom to the top under that center opening or the one that's closest to the prongs and then you're going to slide it back so you're up and over that center bar like that and back down this way so when it's open like this if you're pulling on it and you can't adjust it you know it's you, you've got it right 
um, to adjust it, you would just angle it this way and then you can easily adjust it. But then with it angled that way, it's not going anywhere. So you know you, you've got it going in the right direction. Now with this, I would also recommend folding over a piece of webbing like this and then just stitching a line across here and this is just going to be your stopper so if for instance you were to go to release this and you were doing it really fast you didn't realize you were at the end this would stop it so that your webbing would not come out of the buckle all right so for the strap keeper i just wanted to show you on camera what we're going to be doing so i have a length of my exterior fabric here I'm going to be folding it into the center on both sides. And first, first step is to top stitch down each long side. So let me go ahead and do that and then I'll be right back. All right, so there is what our strap keeper looks like, just top stitched on both sides. And this is just, you know, open on the back, but it doesn't matter because we are going to be, that's gonna be on the inside, you're not gonna see it. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to fold this over your webbing, and we're just using this for uh, guidance for sizing. What you want to do, push this out of the way here, what you want to do is mark a line right, right at the edge of your strap, so you know how wide your strap is. Okay, and we're going to take this out of the webbing. We're going to take it over to the machine, and we're going to stitch down this line. All right, so that's what it looks like right there. I am going to trim this a little bit here just so I don't have quite as long of little tab ends. And then what we want to do is we want to turn it through, which can be tricky because it's so tiny. Okay, there we go. All right, once it's turned through, we are going to, here, let me take my strap piece off. We're going to slide it through, or slide it over the webbing, I should say. If I can get it through there. There we go. All right, so that is basically what it looks like. Let's center my seam in the back here. All right, there we go. So now we are ready to install the male side of the snap or the male side of the buckle. All right, so again, making sure I'm on the right side and if I have to flip this around, I will. All right, so this is gonna be the inside. So the underside of the buckle and coming over here, I want to make sure it goes up, down. I think I have this backwards. Up, and then under. All right, I'm gonna move this adjuster, this little strap keeper up. And then let me look at how this is gonna look here. So this is the back side. Bringing it around, aha, it is going the correct way. <laughs> All right, there is our buckle. So now what I will do is I will feed this end through. And then once I get it, once I get it through, I might need to get some little tweezers or something to grab it for me. Hold on one second. All right, so let's try to grab the webbing here with the tweezers. There we go. Perfect. Oh, it's so cute. Okay, so now this is where I'm going to fold over the end of the webbing here. I'm just gonna fold it over twice and then make a little stitch line here to secure this and then our webbing will be done and our bag will be done. All right, so there is my strap end and look at this, your strap keeper. So that prevents that from sliding off as well and it keeps your strap nice and secure. I love this, oh my gosh, this is such a clever little design. <laughs> All right guys, so here is the Louis waist pack. This is the small size again. This is from Uh-Oh Creations 
Tara over there and I wanted to say again just thank you so much to Tara for allowing us to sew her pattern up for the Marathon Society today. I had a lot of fun making this bag. This is such a cute bag and it's so great for travel. Like it's it's just you, you just for every day like it's got everything you need right there and then you can wear it it's an adjustable bag so you can wear it as a waist bag you can wear it as a sling and your straps not going to go anywhere so yeah thank you again so much guys for joining me for this video tutorial i hope you enjoyed it if you did please give me a thumbs up like subscribe if you haven't already and then feel free to share it with your friends. Um, really, because it's because of you watching my videos and sharing and commenting and all that is that I'm able to continue to do what I love. So um, any support you can give me in that area, I greatly appreciate it. And guys, I just hope you have a really great day and um, go sew something fun.